the sweetness of Yiddishkeit for children. Lectures and stories given over by the Talmudim of our Rav Menachem Yavashlita, based on the teachings of our Rav Avnu Zatzal and Rav Avigdor Miller. Dear children, in this week's parasha, parasha is Noyach, the Torah tells us that Noyach was a tzaddik that went in the ways of Hashem. Rashi tells us that if Noyach would have lived in the times of Avram Avinu, he would not be considered a tzaddik. Why is that? Can it be that Noyach wasn't a tzaddik? To answer this question, he will tell you the following story. Nehemiah was a happy 12-year-old boy growing up in Poland when the Second World War broke out, shattering his peaceful childhood. Nehemiah, like many other Eden, was sent to live in the ghetto, being cut off from his loving family. Life in the ghetto was harsh. It was overcrowded and stuffy. They worked hard all day and there was never enough food to satisfy their hunger. But worst of all was the loneliness. Nehemiah missed his family terribly. Time passed and Yom Toivim came around. It was Simcha's Torah and all the Eden around him were singing and dancing, trying to cheer up despite their sorry state. But Nehemiah just sat in the corner, his head in his hands, feeling sadder than ever. He was flooded with the memories of the past Yom Toivim. He remembered how he would go to show with Tati and his brothers, Yanki and Matl. They would dance with all their friends and return home to the sweet aroma of Mama's delicious food and tinkling laughter of his little sisters as they ran out to greet him. Now he was sitting all alone, surrounded by strangers, and his rumbly stomach was reminding him that he hadn't tasted anything since yesterday's stale piece of bread. Nehemiah didn't even bother smiling. I can't understand everyone else. He thought miserably, why be happy when everything is just so wrong? Just then, Nehemi heard commotion coming from across the room. He hurried over to see what it was all about. That's when it happened. He saw a mean Nazi soldier mocking one of the Jews by painfully pulling his beard and payas while the other Nazis stood around and laughed. Suddenly, Nehemi was filled with furious anger. How could they do this to the poor Yid? He thought to himself angrily. Without thinking, he ran over and slapped the Nazi across his face. Silence. Everyone froze in shock and horror. The Nazi turned around angrily and pointed his gun at Nehemiah. Many thoughts passed through Nehemiah's mind at that moment. He saw his short life before his eyes, his happy childhood, loving family and friends. And on the other hand, these last months filled with so many sadness and misery. That's not how I want to finish my life, Nehemiah realized. If these minutes are all I've got left to live, I wish to make them the happiest and most joyful moments of my life. And then he began to dance. He danced and danced, remembering and thanking Hashem for all the years of life and health he had been granted. For all the happy years, loving family and good friends, he continued dancing, forgetting about all the hardships he went through the last months, forgetting about the fate that awaited him any second. Children, Nehemia chose to see all the good that Hashem granted him since the day he was born instead of complaining rightly about all his hardships. Stop! An angry cry escaped from the Nazi's mouth, cutting short Nehemiah's joyful dance. Stop! He continued. I see that you are happy to die. You probably wish to end your miserable life here in the ghetto. But no, I will not give you the pleasure. And therefore... I will let you live and suffer. Nehemiah stopped dancing and pretended to look disappointed about his punishment. While inside, his heart sang with joy. He was granted with life again. Since then, Nehemiah decided to change his attitude. 
True, it was wartime and he missed his family, but he didn't have to be sad. Instead, he chose to concentrate on the good, on the fact that he was alive and healthy, to appreciate every small piece of food or bit of water, and to just be happy. Time passed and finally the bitter war came to an end. The Khamir survived alive, healthy, and most of all, happy. Determined to rebuild his life and continue to appreciate everything around him, no matter what the conditions were. You understand, children? A person has two choices how to act in life. There is good and bad. But the high level is to choose between good and better. The Holocaust was a terrible war and Nehemiah was right to be sad, but he chose to be better, to appreciate Hashem's kindness and be happy. That, children, was the difference between Noach and Avram Avinu. Noach was a tzaddik. He listened to everything Hashem told him and built the Teva, but he didn't do more than that. The people continued to do Averis and Hashem eventually bought the Mabel. But Avram Avinu did more. He didn't just do what Hashem told him to do. He chose to do better. And he used to go around and go out of his way to tell people about Hashem and be them Mazer B'tshuva. And this is why he was considered a bigger tzaddik than Noah. And next time, children, when someone does something wrong to you and you get upset, even though you are right, you'll remember this story and choose to go in the ways of Avram Avinu. Be better and forgive. And now, children, we would like to hear from you. What lesson have you learned from this story? With a name and address, please email your answers to thesweetkite at gmail.com or WhatsApp to 00972-583-239909. That's 00972-583-239909 And maybe it will be your answer that will be announced next week.